What's up, Covalence friends? Today, we're gonna to be using the OpenAI API to generate some brand new images. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting with the repo, basically where we left off after doing the simple text completion video. Uh, I actually included the link to that repo in the description below, but essentially OpenAI API is already integrated into this Express backend. And I did a few things. I changed the name of the package and I also updated some of these dependencies. So OpenAI right now is on version 4.20.1. I think it was still on version three when we did the first part of this video. So check out that video if you haven't already. It kind of shows you how to set up uh, the OpenAI API into your server or into your backend, whatever that may be. But we're using Express, Node.js, all that fun stuff. And so we also added .env just so that I don't have to actually show you our API key here. We're gonna use an environment variable to use the OpenAI API key. So essentially that's all we really changed. So you can go ahead and clone this repo or you can clone the you know, GPT repo that we did already from part one of the video and start from there, wherever you wanna start from. But we're gonna open up routers and we're gonna open up this ai.ts file and we're actually gonna have a few issues here. As you can see, we have some red squiggly lines. Uh, that's because OpenAI actually updated everything, so they had breaking changes. It was a new major version. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to remove both of these things, and now you actually have just OpenAI exported from it. And so we're gonna to need to update this instantiation, and then the configuration isn't used anymore, so we actually just delete that. And then everything actually is the same. So we just pass in the API key as a property of an object, as an argument for this instantiation here. And then we don't have this create completion anymore. Um, we could use this if we wanna do a text completion, uh, but we're actually gonna change this to be an image completion. So we wanna do openai.images, and there is a generate function here. And so we're gonna call generate, and now our model is no longer going to be text DaVinci 3. That's for the actual prompt completion or the simple text completion. It is not for chat. So if you're trying to do chat, that would be something different. Um, but for text completion, you would do this. Now we wanna do image generation. And so we're gonna use doll-e-3. Now that's just the latest version of their image generator right now. You might be, it, like by the time you watch this video, it might be Dolly 4 Dolly 5 Dolly 1000, who knows, they're, right, they're actually improving these things. And so whatever you're on, I would actually just go on OpenAI and actually look at whatever their latest version is and use that. Now that might actually change whatever you know the arguments in here can be or what is actually allowed. Um, and that actually also will change with you know the actual package version as well. So right now, um, obviously prompt or temperature is not taken nor is max tokens, but prompt is still an argument. We can also pass in N, which is the number of images to be generated. Now, currently Dolly 3 only supports one image being generated. If you drop down to Dolly 2, you can actually put up to 10 images, I think, right now. So if you wanted to actually have different variants or allow somebody to actually choose an option, you would want to use Dolly 2 still. And uh, you, know, you can actually increase this N number to give you a different variance and whatnot. Now, we also have a quality property here. And by default, you only have, it's by default, it is standard. So you don't have to pass it in. Now the other option, as you saw, was HD. That's if you want something extremely uh, like detailed and I believe it increases the resolution or maybe not, I don't think it's the resolution, maybe it's the, uh, the pixel density. I'll have to actually honestly look into this. If any, any of you guys know, feel free to let me know in the comments because I'm actually curious myself. I just haven't looked into it exactly because I know you do actually pass in the size as well. So. Uh, we're gonna do quality and we're gonna do uh, size, right? So size is actually, you have all of these options here. You have different square sizes. Um, and right now the recommended different or the recommended options are 1024 by 1024 is the fastest or actually any square, sorry, any square is the fastest. So 256 by 256 would actually be the fastest. Um, but it does recommend you use these top three options here. And so you, as you can see, this is essentially a square. This would be a uh, uh, like a portrait, actually, like so, almost like a phone size uh, image. So it would kind of be, you know, essentially take up a uh, phone size image in the in the, in the uh, I guess the shape of a portrait image. And then we also have the landscape image here, which would be a really good size for like a hero image, right, for a website. So again, definitely the right sizes, I think, for particular use cases. And um, 
yeah, we're gonna do a square. We're gonna stick to square, uh, but um, just because square is generally the fastest for it, and we'll do 1024. We don't need 1024 by 1024, but why not, right? I wanna see how fast it's gonna actually take. Um, so again, let's do response format as well. And we can actually choose between base64 or a URL. Let's do URL. And so the URL is good for up to an hour before it gets deleted. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you really need as far as that goes. So that's basically it. We're going to still pass back completion.data and it's going to basically pass back um, an object that we're able to access and we will be able to actually grab the URL that we need. And um, it will be an actual array. If we look in here, we can see that it is openai.images.image array, right? So we are gonna get an array passed back to the front end. So we'll go ahead and move on to our front end now. So let's do our index at HTML first. Now the index is gonna be pretty much the same as we had it before. This was basically just having a kind of text completion or response from ChatGPT that we are putting in our responses tag. Uh, we are going to add one thing inside this form, which is going to be a div tag and an image inside that. And we're gonna give our image an ID. Let's just give our the ID image. We're only gonna have one. And then let's go ahead and hide it at first. We'll go ahead and show it once we actually get an image. But I don't really want a broken image on the page. I think it just looks bad. But that's really all we need to do for as far as adding anything to the index.html, which is kind of nice. Um, we could change the title here, right? Image GPT. Again, it's still chat GPT, but um, you know, I'm trying to be clever, I guess. Uh, so let's see. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna pull up our styles. So we're gonna public CSS styles.css. And we're gonna add just like a few things in here, nothing too crazy. Um, one thing I actually noticed is uh, we probably wanna center some of these responses just to make it look a little bit better. Not mandatory, but again, I'm kind of a stickler for these things and I think I messed it up in my first video, so we'll go ahead and fix that. But we need to add the actual hidden class, so it's just display none, we don't wanna show it. Um, and then we're going to make sure our image has a width, of, let's just say 15 M's. And then we'll do uh, inside of our form, we'll say the divs, we want a text align center just so that we can actually center that image, right? So that's all we're really gonna need to do as far as that goes. Uh, let's move into our JavaScript now. So if you go to JS or we should say TypeScript, right? But again, it is just JavaScript at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna change up some of the things in here. Right now we're adding text, we're adding this thing to the GPT here. And it basically is just kind of showing the conversation with me and chat GPT. Uh, we're going to still kind of use these functions as best as possible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna print the URL of the image to the screen. And then we're going to show the image in the actual image element. And so let's grab that image element first and foremost. So we're gonna actually cast this to an HTML image element. And it's gonna be document.getElementById and that's just image. And now that we have the image, what we can do is we can actually check in here, you know, if not image, we'll just return. We don't actually want to show it, but we will still print the URL to the screen and we'll say image.source equals URL. And we're going to actually make this say URL since we're going to be printing it. And, uh, and yeah, so we're going to pass in the URL as the argument. And we're gonna add the text, we're gonna add the URL as text to the screen, and then we're gonna set the image source. And then we're going to actually remove that uh, class. So we'll say remove hidden, and we should be good, right? So that'll actually show the image. And then every time we actually change the image, it'll just update the image and you know keep removing a class that doesn't actually exist anymore. So last thing we need to do is we actually need to change the call itself because we, actually don't need to affect this at all, right? So everything's the same, the prompt is still being sent up. We're still using body.prompt and you can double check that by looking here. So yes, we can see it's just body.prompt and we're passing in body.prompt. And so in here, all we really need to do is change this here. So since we're passing back an array already, all we need to do is access that array. And since we're only having one for now, because right now Dolly3 only supports one image, we are just going to access the first one and pass in the actual URL. So that should be it. And that's pretty much as simple as it needs to be. We should be able to actually run this thing now. So let's open up a terminal. Um, oh, you know, one thing we actually forgot was I included our .env here, but what I didn't do was actually instantiate it. So 
what we need to do is we need to actually import import and it's dot env slash config and what that does is it takes all the values in here and puts them into the environment variables that you set and so this open ai key will be set with our value i'm not going to show it because you know that's Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'll show it. I'm going to remove this secret key anyway. So this is basically our .env. If you don't know how to use the .env, that's our secret key that we're using. And you know, you guys can copy it all you want, but it's not going to work. Uh, and that basically gets put into our OpenAI key because of this being specified here. And then now that value is accessible. So if we go ahead and we run npm run dev. That is our script that we're using. That'll start the server. It'll compile all the TypeScript do all that fun stuff and we are listening on port 3000. So let's go ahead and open up a web browser real quick and we are going to open up localhost 3000. Let's go ahead and open up our dev tools as well just because we're going to look at the network. We didn't put any loaders or loading indicators in this and so it is going to be a little bit slow because it does have to actually generate that image. So if we wanted to actually type in a prompt here, let's just say kangaroos boxing, right? And see what that actually happens so we get the little me that's the prompt that we're creating and we see the request is actually sending a request you know to our ai route and it's taking a little bit because again open ai is actually generating this image on the fly and as you can see we actually have kangaroos boxing that's created right so pretty cool pretty awesome little image here Again, it does some stuff where it tries to like add details and things like that. So they do actually have a prompt that you can put in there that makes it so that it like very basically only creates an image on what you ask. Uh, but, you know, again, I think it's pretty cool that they try and actually make it a little bit more interesting for you and they try and kind of interpret really what you want. Um, so again, you can actually generate different size images for our case. All right, we probably didn't need a 1024 by 1024, but now we know that this image is big enough to support whatever we actually need it to. And so, um, you know, if we just say uh, someone learning to code, let's see what it actually gives us. Um, but again, it takes a little bit, you get this pending response. So again, we should be showing a loading indicator. I'll let you guys play with that and add that yourself. I would encourage you to send us some of your pictures because I would love to actually see like, you know, some of the things that you guys come up with, but Super cool image again, someone's learning the code, looks like, you know, in their in their dorm room or wherever they are, with a cup of coffee, of course. And uh, yeah, it looks like they might even have Visual Studio Code up there. So get to work and send us some images. All right, so I hope that was easy enough to understand. I hope it was something that was kind of cool that you guys could incorporate into your own projects. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, send us some links to some images that you guys create, because. It'd be pretty cool to see that or drop them in our discord channel if you guys haven't signed up uh, for any of our programs check out our community membership join our discord community and show us some of these images that you guys create so check it out in the links below and uh, hit subscribe check out our merch store and uh, if not we'll hopefully see you soon in another video get out of here